Hey friends, welcome back to Bubbly Balloon Co. My name is Rachel and today we are doing a spooky Harry Potter themed Halloween balloon creation. Now, if you remember my like spooky Harry Potter themed Halloween nails, that definitely ties into today's creation. Now, when I say spooky, we're doing like dark arts, Slytherin, Bellatrix Lestrange vibes, okay? We're doing black, white, uh, the super black and white agate. We're going dark. If this space looks familiar, that's because I am back in my friend's house where I did the farmhouse garland. She has the most beautiful house. It's one of my favorite places to create balloon creations in, and she's throwing a Harry Potter themed party. So let's build something epic. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and inflate balloons using the technique I cover in the fastest balloon garland ever video where I tie balloons in pairs, tie those together to form quads, tie those together to form clusters, and put it all together to create the garland. Let's go. Also, if you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? For supplies today, I'm using white from Qualitex in 16 inch. I'm using just about every size of Qualitex onyx black I could get my paws on, which was five inch, nine inch, 11 inch, 16 inch, and then I didn't have any 24 or 36 from Qualitex, so I grabbed some other random black balloons in 24 and 36 to add to this creation. And last but not least, I'm using the black and white super agate from Qualitex in both 11 inch and 30 inch. All right, setting up on the floor here, getting all my supplies out around me. Make sure I take my wedding ring off before I start and start inflating in pairs. I got two pairs, put them together to make my first quad, make another quad, put those together to form a cluster, make another cluster, and I can start tying these bad boys together in my garland. Now here I'm using black 260s to tie these clusters together to form the base of the garland. And now I just need to repeat and repeat and repeat. And hey, my first garland's done. Now that one's about eight feet. I'm gonna go ahead and make a second one around the same size. Okay, now that I've inflated around 15 or 20 feet of garland, it is time to get it hung, and then I can start accenting with my large balloons, my small balloons, and lastly, apply all those beautiful vinyls. Now hanging this creation is gonna be super easy because you see these curtains behind me? That means there's a curtain rod above, and I can go ahead and hang my 260s, my fishing line, whatever I wanna hang with, directly to that curtain rod. Obviously, we're not gonna put too much weight on it. You know, you gotta think with that, but this is a pretty light creation. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few different attachment points up top, hang my garland, and we'll go to town adding in my large balloons, my small balloons, and all that beautiful vinyl detail. All right, with my trusty stepladder on the scene, I can start putting up my attachment points. Now these are, of course, the same black 260s I just used to assemble my garland, and all I'm doing is winding them through a bunch of balloons to make sure this is securely in place. Accio balloon garland! Hey, it almost worked. Luckily my friend came to my rescue because I couldn't quite reach that, that could have been bad. But hey, I tied up the other end, left a little curve in the middle, went back and reshaped till it was how I liked it, and now it's time to hang up the second one, which was pretty easy when you're hanging straight up and down and it's a light garland like this one. You don't need too many attachment points. And the obligatory celebratory dance, otherwise, would it really be a Bubbly Balloon Co. video? Gotta add on that little bustle there, y'all know I like a little bustly booty on my garlands. Okay, and then I just need to figure out where are these large balloons gonna go? Just working out my sizing and my placement there, and got it! Now in this video, of course, I'm gonna be using some really cool vinyls from my friends on Etsy, Mickey's Magical Bazaar. She's so helpful. Every time I need vinyls, I always go to her. She has so many to choose from, and if I don't see what I'm looking for, I message her. She helps me come up with the perfect things, perfect colors, size, creation, all of it, and it really brings the creations to life and adds that extra pop. So if anyone out there is looking for vinyls to add to your balloons, I highly recommend going to Mickey's Magical Bazaar. I will put her link in the description below. Y'all aren't gonna believe this magic trick I learned. Damn, I need to practice my spell work. You know what, in the meantime, I'm just gonna do these vinyls by hand. So step one of applying vinyls, go ahead and clean off that surface of that balloon wherever you're gonna wanna put that vinyl using a little bit of rubbing alcohol and wipe it down real well. Professional tip number one, don't get it in your eye. Professional tip number two, clean the surface area off well enough the first time that you don't have to go back and do it again a second time. All right, now in working with a larger vinyl, especially one that is words, something you can easily cut out, I highly recommend cutting it out and doing it in sections to avoid any 
bubbling and puckering and kind of like misshaping that can happen. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm cutting these words out more or less one by one so that I can put them on exactly where I want them and not have to worry about that. Snip, 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 trim, 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 and I'm ready to go. The next step can be quite tricky, especially when you're working with a design that's super detailed. We wanna gently peel this backing off and make sure that all the vinyl is stuck to the transfer sheet, that clear sticky paper that we're gonna be applying to the balloon. And this part can be pretty tricky. So I'm going slowly here. Luckily this first word didn't give me too much of a problem, but you will see me struggle with it here soon. So going ahead and place that wherever I want it on the balloon, gently, carefully, kind of smoothing it out from the center outwards if possible, and using this little plastic scraper tool to make sure it's firmly applied, and then I can go ahead and carefully start peeling away my transfer paper. This step did give me a little bit of a hard time later on. Okay, next word. Go ahead and place that where I want it. Go ahead and use my scraper tool again and gently peel away this transfer paper. This did give me a little bit of a hard time because there was so much detail to this word, but I used my little scraper there to just press everything down again, make sure it was all good. And we're just repeating that same process over and over again. And this was on a 36 inch balloon, by the way. Pulling off that final word now, that big sucker, the house of my people, the Slytherin. And in the end, this is how it turned out. Pretty cute, right? So I'm applying the smaller vinyls directly onto the garland itself. I'm just tying in the balloon I want to use here with the 260, wrapping it around a couple other balloons to keep it secure. The first thing we're going to do is clean the surface area with some rubbing alcohol and wipe it down with a rag. And you guys, I'm so sorry about this being out of frame. I swear to you, someday I'm going to have a camera person who's going to make sure I get good shots here for y'all. But on event days, I just don't always have the time to stop and readjust and get the perfect shot. I'm so sorry. Now, as you can see, this awesome vinyl is a wand with a spell coming out of it. I'm assuming that's the Avada Kedavra curse because it's green but I ended up not having a large enough balloon to fit the entire thing on one balloon so I do have to split it into two so that's what I'm doing here is cutting this wand out and leaving the spell intact so I can put them on two balloons in such a way that it's still gonna look natural professional tip number three use your mouth as a spare pocket all right then I'm just placing this wand exactly where I want it on the balloon and using my trusty little scraper tool to make sure it gets fully applied now peeling the paper off of this design was an absolute witch and that's probably because there's so much small, like, tiny, intricate detail in this design. So after trying to remove the transfer paper from both ends, I gave up on that plan and I worked my way from the middle on out. So I made a small cut in the transfer paper a few inches away from the end of the design and I started by peeling that back and then using that momentum to keep it going. Three hours later. This one did take for freaking ever, but this is what it looked like in the end with that shining, glittering green spell. This one did end up being kind of stressful. I did end up replacing the Bellatrix off camera. Luckily, I had a second one on me because that first one, who girl, needed some work. And look how cute this party turned out, you guys. These details were absolutely amazing. Not only was the hostess fantastic, all of her touches were so wonderful, but all of the attendees also brought different dishes. They were all Harry Potter themed. There were those little golden snitches on the table and shepherd's pie and, you know, a Lego Hogwarts castle, a steaming cauldron, these various elements came together to make it so magical and can we talk about those floating candles both at day and the night look oh my gosh they absolutely killed it i was so happy to be a part of this and i hope it gave you some spooky ideas for your next harry potter or halloween themed party <laughs> avocado cadavra she kills me Hey, if you like seeing my videos and you're subscribed to the channel already, don't forget to hit that notification bell to get notified when there's new videos. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me, you guys. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see y'all in the next video.